Okay, we got the crank all done up now, so now I can move on the case. So we need to get the Timken bearing set up in here now. So that means we got to put the crank over there in the stand over there on the left table. I'll hold it. Hit the damn thing. So we're going to use this here as a holding fixture. This goes into two holes in the flywheels, and the center painting shaft goes in the middle. That's what these holes for the flywheel are for. Two Timken bearings and our spacer. Now this changes your inplay between the bearings as needed. So you've got to make sure you have that in there. If you don't have that in there, when you tighten your bearings down, your sprocket on your crank, it locks these bearings up and it turns the prop real quick. So don't forget to put your stupid spacer in there. And also you have to adjust the thickness of this to get your inplay set. So we're going to work on that. We're also going to have to have a tool for doing that. So this is pressed together, but not with a press on the outside. It's pressed together on the end, on the end of the shaft right there without tools. And I have a few snap ring in here, but not very many. For the early the late motor, we got a bunch of. All right, so now we're going to go ahead and set up this crank right here. Who's that sneaking in the back door? It looks like a big two-legged rat. Good thing Scooby's not here today. He'd be in trouble. Stealing my tools again? Mm -hmm. Tool thieves. Oh, interruptions already. Alright, so what this does here is this goes against the crank and then pushes the bearing down as you tighten it up here. So we'll be back in a minute. All right, we're back to work. So we're holding up the bearing races. I'm going to put this lower end in here. Yeah, get your pickup in there in that flat area. Okay, which side bearing are we going to use? You can get yours right where the motorhome was last time. Looks like new bearings. All right, you figure out how to do that? It's pretty complicated. Mm. Make sure that's out of video so nobody can see it. All right, Jimmy. All right, there's our spacer. We already talked about the spacer. All right, let me move this over here and see better. Wherever the crank is. Okay, here's a special tool. Nice. You can almost see some of that. That's going on pretty easy. Yeah. That was not much of a press fit. Better make sure you tighten your motor sprocket nut good and tight. <laughs> That's perfect for a race application. I can get this thing apart in the back of my truck easy. <laughs> <laughs> I like that for me, but not you. I like to have a little bit more press of fit than that. That was kind of loose. Okay, now we have to uh, figure out what this is going to be. Okay, 
Okay, how much clearance do we got? Hear it? Yeah. Perfect. I actually have a fitted bearing that fits correctly. Hard to believe. All right, doggy, definitely. I'll give you a call in the morning. Let's see where you're at. All right, we got some issues now for the rest of this. This isn't going to fly Sweet. like this. Will do. That's not quite the press All fit right, I want. Here. We'll talk to that. Not quite there. We have a cure for that. It's called Loctite. Yeah. yeah, that's the loosest one I've ever had. At least one that wasn't destroyed already anyway. Doesn't go down now. There it goes. All right, the lock head will set that up and stick it. You would think that makes it easier to put the case together, don't you? Makes it harder because now you got to deal with it. Maybe with the lock head. There it is. Okay, where's that spacer at that was on there? Don't lose the spacer. Don't forget not to put that in there. Very important. Okay, now we're going to work on the left main seal over here. So we take a threaded in seal retainer and also bearing retainer. Hold the bearing race in. So this is what keeps the case together. You have a snap ring right here. And this here pushes the bearing races in against the snap ring and keeps it all assembled. So when this falls out, your motor falls apart. Minor problem. So on your motor you got bearings that fall out and races can fall out. Yes. Okay. I'm gonna prelude the seal for you. And the thread. Official early tool. It's made by Adjustable Face Spanner. J.H. Williams and Company. Does that sound like an American company? What? Okay, that's not quite tight enough. We've got to work on that. All right, over here to real tools. <clears throat> Beat the hell out of it with a hammer. Water on the floor again. You're good. Don't worry about it. Is that all right right there? Yep, you're good. Still in shot? Yes. Good. Guess what the press does? What is it? 
sure the wrench don't pop out. <laughs> Keeps it engaged, exactly. Just like that. Use the appropriate tool. And it might not fall out now. <laughs> okay, camera disappeared. Okay, so beating out with the hammer there, it didn't do any damage to the the holes here. Now, if we were just holding on to this and beating out with the hammer, it probably would pop out and screw up these holes. Press pressing on this keeps it down in there and <clears throat> so we can get it out. And the wheel's in a way. All right, now I go back to our case and our Loctite issue. Spacers in there. We're all lubed up. It goes on a little easy. drag on it. Now you didn't bring over your motor sprocket now, did you? I did not. <clears throat> I think that would do me no good without the seal spacer anyway. You mean this one? That one. something to tighten up against. A little sprocket or something I got laying around to use. We tighten a nut against it. Almost. I'm about a race. Oh, I think I'm just gonna go grab some parts. Alright, I'm gonna go grab me a compensator sprocket sleeve and we'll be back. About that size, let's do it. Okay, we're trying to put this thing together and we, we came up with a problem with the spacer is too short. This is a used one. So the new one might be slightly taller, but I doubt it. But anyway, it's below the it's below the spacer here. So when you tighten this thing down, it'll hit, lock the motor up. So these here are cam shim spacers for sportsters, number two cam shim for iron heads. And they come in ten thou increments. And there's the number for them. Yeah, they're 10 thou thick, so you have to look them up. So that'll get the sprocket above the height we need to be. So I'm going to go ahead and put this on here. I want to get this all torqued down so when the Loctite sets up, it will have something to set up against. You want to put a little oil on the threads before you hammer them home.
It's gonna take a good puller to get that off. Yeah. That's on there pretty good. We always seem to have another problem to deal with. Now let's see if we can get that thing off. It's a good thing I grabbed the one that had a, a pulling device on it. I got one bolt in there. Oh, there's the other one. These are Harley twin cam case bolts, I think. Put some twin cam parts in your bike. All right, is that going to come out? That'll be the next problem. I keep them out. You can't need my tools. Can't be there. Can't stand between me and my tools. Doesn't work very good. Get this camera out of the way before I drop kick it too. All right. You even got the right size socket. How's that? That came off easy. So I think we can get it back off if you have a problem. Either that or I may have to end up running that sprocket. You got a belt driver, sir. <laughs> no. <laughs> no, but I got the compensator with the big spring on it. Oh, you got that crappy ass stock crap on it. <laughs> this is a crappy ass earlier stock ship. It's solid. What the hell? You got like paint coming off in the thing. I thought those were chips. Those aren't chips. Those are silver crap. What the hell is that? Stuff? All right, Maybe this way it won't go on. It's got silver crap on it. All right, we're gonna see if I can't get that to go down further. At some point, I'm gonna have to get this stuff to be tight. Balling up things. That sounds like it got tight. Yeah. Yeah. That was in there. I'll 
big of a zip gun you got at home? <laughs> got one made in China. That's why we tied it one blip. <laughs> Just in case. Yeah. Okay. So tomorrow or whenever, if you you can borrow my tool and pull it off later if you want, or however you want to do it. So that we can get it apart. Because I don't think you're gonna get that sprocket off there too easy without a tool. It's kind of hard. Okay, so like everything on this motor, it's just falling right together. Nobody believe that? <laughs> That's why we script everything around here. <laughs> Got heavier. That sprocket put it over the edge for, for heat and weight. <laughs> yeah. Alright, so that's ready to go together on that half. And this house over here, we got a little bit to go together here on this side yet. So we're going to lube it up, make sure it all fits. You know, we lost so much fun already on everything. My grease oil. All right, so we use more assembly lube on everything. Uh oh, we can't do that yet. <clears throat> Were you thinking about putting a cam in the bike? Uh, Probably a new bearing. But it ain't nothing special, but it's gonna go in. <laughs> Right now, there's no bearing here. <laughs> then it should spin freely. So we need to put this inside the case before we put the case together. It appears that we're missing the part that goes inside of here called a bearing. <laughs> All right, so you got to push that in. Back over to the press. Oh, you're in the video now. You didn't move quick enough. Famous. Just your voice. Oh, look at that rat over there digging through the plastic. Do you chew that up too like how Scooby does? Yep. That's your Scooby. Good home, Mom. It's her dog. He gets skinny when he hangs out down here. Yeah, he doesn't get fed very well. <laughs> He's not a very good rat hunter, so he's not working very good in the food department. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so we're going to go ahead and push this thing in here. I haven't even got half, I haven't even halfway in the video. That's pretty good. Okay, now after you get them to start, very important to make sure that the rollers are vertical. So if you're looking at those rollers, you gotta make sure these are going straight up and down. Because if they're at an angle like that and you press it in, it locks up the roller. That's way too fucking far back. Because when you squeeze this thing down to go in the case, the rollers lock up at an angle and they won't rotate. And I have lots of bearings that like to do that. You can see how these ones are already leaning over a little bit. So a lot of times I have to take them back apart. Grab my pocket knife down there. So you want to make sure they're not laying off the side too far. <clears throat> Thank you. So you gotta just get in the habit of moving these things a little bit. These ones don't even want to move. You know, see this one won't even move right now. You can't even move the damn thing. So why is that not moving? 
Yes, I can't even move the rollers at all right now. So that's already not going to work. No movement means no work. I get to pull the bearings out. That was the bigger one. Metric sockets work good for lots of things, see. I got like an 18 point on the outside of that. <laughs> like jewelry. Faceted. Okay, so that bearing, you see how it's really angled over right now, it don't want to work. Now once you take the press off of it, it rotates freely. Okay, so we're going to try to make that thing center up. Hopefully it'll stay centered. Put it in. On the, uh, the round side goes in, the flat side goes out. In case you didn't know that. So we're going to try this one more time. Some reason it's like it's supposed to be right now. Looks like you got burr on the side of that case too, I didn't notice. See the bearings somehow. I don't know. I can't get a angle where I can see them, but anyway, they rotate now. So, so you want to make sure they rotate before you put your motor together. Otherwise, I guarantee you, you will be back taking it back apart because that bearing will not work very long without rotation. So we have washers here. This one's all worn out. I think I showed it earlier. We're not using that one. We're going to put the brand new one on the inside because it gets worn from both sides. We we'll put the two bearings in there, which are now down here. And then we take the washer, the used one that's worn on this side and not on this side. We'll put the, outs the bad side toward the outside. The cages go with the rollers up. Should be able to put a snap ring in there. So this is our snap ring. So I'm going to put the good side toward the washer and the crappy side toward the outside, which is the opposite of how it was. And of course, we're going to use the used one. The used one. You didn't want to spend more money, did you? Yeah, no, <laughs> it's always good for at least one more time, right? Oh, I looked at it. Sure it's in there. Make sure the bearings rotate freely. I almost can see some of this. So you want to make sure these rotate nice and free and they got in play in them. 
no inflay is bad. Okay. Now you want to see if the case fits on there with no problem. Come up a little bit and check for clearance. You hear the clearance? Good. It fits. So that's good. Now before I get too much further, I'm going to put this, uh, the plug in the crank. Set screw plugs up the end of the crank. Don't forget that. This is not an end oiler crank, it's a side oiler. So if you don't put the plug in there, it's an end oiler, and an end oiler doesn't work on this motor. You will have extremely low oil pressure, like in non-existent. And usually I like to put a little dab of uh, Super Snickum on it. What do you call Loctite? This is the other green Loctite. It's a little bit less than blue. I do want to be able to get the plug out down the road, or somebody might want to get it out down the road. Turn it up. And it's always nice to make sure that you have oil pressure. So I'm going to check to see if it's airflow through the shell. We should hear it come out the road over here. Mm. You know, I've had them where they actually plug off the oil hole. <laughs> That's always a plus. <laughs> okay, so right now we gotta go work on some studs. Okay, these need to be dyed, so we're gonna go work on these for a minute and we'll be back. Alright, we're back. The battery took a puke. Right after the phone call, right in the middle of the phone call, I'm not sure. All right, I got three bone oil on this side now. You missed a lot. Okay, I'm just going to go together now. Squish, squish. Where's that new bolt? Boy, those blasted cases look good, don't they? Yeah, they were they really corroded damn, before. Yeah. Cleaned up quite nicely. Damn. Really yeah. Okay, we put the dowel bolts in the bottom, which are the ones with the fat side to them. Don't beat on the motor sprocket over there. See that paint tighten things up a little bit. Okay, the top center is the one you're missing, right? So my bolts in the top center. Okay. Where's the nut go? Got brand new grade 5 nuts. We know the grade 5 because they got writing on the side. That's how you know. It's going to have grade 5. If it's not anything on the side of the nut, it's a grade 3 nut, which means it's not very strong. Which are all the ones you find everywhere else. Okay, this did not want to start. Still doesn't want to start. Ten millimeter. No, it's nine sixteen. It's not half inch. Dumbass over there in the background. I just wanted to see if you were paying attention, Petro. That's all. Okay. So you want to know where our next problem was? This is our next problem. The bolt won't go in the hole. A little bit hard starting. Yeah, that's a little bit more than it's supposed to take. You should never need to come back out, right? Yeah, but I know what it does for alignment of the case house because the dial, it's, it's overriding these dowel pins probably. 
How could it do that? How could it override the towel pin? Because it's really tight. So I don't know what the deal is, but the bolt went in, so I'm, I'm going with it. <clears throat> Otherwise, I gotta take the whole thing back apart, clean all the goo off of it. It's more work than I wanted to do. But if it didn't catch that last time, I was gonna have to do that. But <clears throat> it screwed up. It actually caught and went in. What's the torque spec on all those bolts on case halves? Tetro tight. Oh, that's what I was wondering. Tight enough to make me happy. One, two, three. That's how tight it is. Three Tetros tight. That's two on that one already. Yeah, that's about that far. Now this one you don't torque it much because it's real thin right here, so you only give it just a little bit of torque. About that much. Just one grunt. Yeah. I was already tight. I was on this one and a half too. <laughs> Look how nice and free that lower end is. Okay, that big long stud goes right here. <clears throat> you got plenty of room to put those stupid washes on there if you want. <laughs> you can put those on yourself too when I'm busy. <laughs> Let's get them on there now. Want to take them on. <laughs> You're not going to take them back apart, are you? No. <laughs> it's kind of safe it's now or never, <laughs> huh? I mean, let's, you know, what the hell? We'll end up in his collection box yeah. right there. I think it was never is what the answer was. <laughs> See how tight was this going to be? I don't know how good these threads are, so... I'm going to put a little torque on it. That was only a little tight. Okay, next long bolt goes here. Do you have anything on this side of the case? Yes. So that means the air cleaner is welded up and the spin all the cables on this side? Uh, no, I take it back. Uh, just the air cleaner bracket itself. Okay. Because this stud here has a short piece and a long threaded piece. And the threaded, the long threaded either goes on the air cleaner mount or on the speedometer cable mount, depending okay. on if you have one over here or not. Usually it goes on the air cleaner side. But well, I haven't thought far enough ahead to deal with the speedometer cable yet. Well, right now you don't have the stud here because that's my stud. So. <laughs> <laughs> You're really not thinking very far ahead. <laughs> See, if they both go down, that counts as two. Now, if you put washing into here, to see the thread's not engaging that all the way. Because that's just flush with the thread right now, that one. Okay, the little short one goes right here. That's a plug fit. I'll use my hand. It's that paint I put on there. Sticking mm -hmm. up to get out. This one doesn't have any room for nuts on this one. This one we're not even getting flush out of it. And the wrench doesn't want to fit in there either. See, that's why you shave your wrenches down to fit. Okay, the last one's this one, the breather. You gotta make sure all the stuff's cleaned out so it'll breathe. You get the little snorkel dick thing that goes on here? I do. Good. Well, it's about 35 years old, so I don't know how flexible it is. As long as it goes on. <laughs> it's purely optional. Then the inner primary keep it from falling off anyway? <laughs> It'll still vibrate and rattle, you know. Yeah, but the rubber, yeah, it's been held in by the primary. years you said? <laughs> 83. Wow. Okay. Someone's got puke all over the rocks. How'd that happen? Get it back. Well, the head is just well I didn't use a steel <laughs> hammer to chew the flowers up either. <laughs>
But I did check to see what size it was. You match it up with a hammer? Yeah, they were using a little dinky one that was... It's... I think it was less than this. Oh. Or not, no bigger than this. Because that matched the radius. So you got the indent marks in the flywheel there. Is that what, four ounce hammer? Uh, this is a pound, uh, one pound. <laughs> you can hit on that fly all day with a one pound hammer. If I torque the flywheels, it won't make any difference. It ain't going to move. I was using my 25 pound hammer. And it was bouncing off the fly before it moved very much. Most of the time it didn't want to move even then. But I did severely over torque your nuts for you. Just in case you want them tight. Mm. But the one would only go to 250 foot pounds on one crank pin nut, and the other one was 295. Jeez. And the one main shaft nut would only go to 150, and the left side went to 195. So. The pinion nut sucks, or the gym shell, because it wouldn't torque. It just kept going down and not getting any tighter, so I quit. Yeah, both feet against the flywheel pulling on that wrench? No, I was using my little torque wrench right over there. Oh. Earlier. We'll be using that to tighten up the real nuts here in a while. 550 foot pounds. Okay. At least 500. Well, it gets tightened that tight. Left side shaft on Nevo. Got some S wheels and nuts and stuff. Oh, you didn't want to come loose, did you? Uh, you know. My race bike, I pulled 500 on the darn crank pin nuts. In the main nut, I'll pull 400. But then I got a good part, you can't have none of that stock crappy shit. You got Jim's nuts and S and S wheels and shit and S and S XL or Jim shafts to pull torque like that. Uh, that import stuff won't hold up. Come on, that import stuff was made with the finest tears. Yeah, well that S and S nuts aren't the best either, but they're better than everybody else except for Jim's. <laughs> Jim's are quite a bit better than S and S and the nuts. Down a lot tighter. You can usually get another 75 to 100 pounds out of them. Now, if you want to clean this off really good, you get some brake clean in here and <coughs> knock down this three bomb. That's pretty good. I know, I figured you were going to let me do all the work. <laughs> <laughs> well, it wasn't going to stop you. See, my bench is now full of it too, see. This is not the right kind of rag, it doesn't come up. And the stuff doesn't want to come off. This thing's got a galaxy scraper in it. One of the problems is too soft to use right now. <laughs> It'll push, harden up later. Just push it around. Yeah, you can just rub it off a little bit. Yeah, it'll wear it off over time. It pretty much does anyway. All right. Can you turn over? Look at that. So if the weight of flywheels moves it back up, you know it's not buying you. And we got the seal on here too, remember it's engaged mm -hmm. right now. And that's no lubrication on there either, is there? There's lube on the pinion shaft pre seal. Pre yeah. Or assembly lube. See, that's probably a Harley sprocket. See how it's now wobbling side to side? <laughs> 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 it's going up and down. <laughs> like a lot of the aftermarket ones do. Well, it spins nice and straight, see? And you always want to look at the pinion shaft after you do all this and make sure it's not wobbling. Because if it's wobbling, you got a problem. See how it's staying true? Yeah, you want to make sure you see that. Okay, here's your uh, painted up nut. Now, did you, you didn't have anything going here or not? I don't remember. No. You going to put anything in there? Yeah, we opened it up and it was empty. So, so you're going to leave it empty? Okay, good. <laughs> I want to go start. Use part from that. 
I think there's just a little spring that goes in there anyway. Isn't it? It's the filter for the hydraulics that you're not using, yes. Okay. But then it won't have to clean the screen. That's right. There it goes. The top threads are kind of bad in case. So you see, once it got past it, it got loose. No, this is the one I'm supposed to be using for tightening this. This was only slightly. Did you guys get your t-shirts yet? Yeah, he got his picked up, yeah. Alan's in charge of t-shirt sales around here. And the tribodine oil, as you can tell. Make sure everybody yeah. <laughs> everybody's advertising for the man there. Okay, so we got that piece in. What's left I didn't do yet? Oh, I didn't put your oil pump stuff in there. Did you want to leave this off until you put the oil pump in there, or do you want me to put this in tight and tighten it all down? Uh, it's, yeah. Why don't you leave it off the, until I get the oil pump in? Okay. Now, I only have one key, and it takes two, so I'm not sure what happened to the other one. It might still be on the shelf, maybe? Oh, there it is. Okay. So I probably want to get that off. Pair of dikes usually works pretty good for getting these out. There. Mm -hmm. Now you got to put this on the new shaft. It's either going really tight, nice, or be loose. So far all your keys have been tight. So that one's loose. So that's going to fall out and won't stay in. Where's the other one at? Same problem. Okay, so I can't put those in right now. I always like putting the oil pump all together in here, then put on the, the drive gear. And then tighten all this other crap down. So yeah, it's it, a pain trying to get it apart. It's a lot easier putting the pump gear on there first before this, all this other crap goes on there. Because when this thing's engaged in the oil pump drive gear, it doesn't, you can't just slide it in. You have to rotate the motor. Okay, so I'll give you all these parts back in the baggie. So for now, that's all the stuff I've got here to put together. You didn't bring any more parts to put on. So there you go. Yeah, I need more work to do around here. All right, so what year is this? 58 or something? 58. 58. So right, 58 motor, lower end, cleaned up, ready to go. It's not white corroded like it used to be. It's just nice aluminum now. So anyway, that's what it all looks like. So that's how it should be when you're done. No problem, do it again in an hour or two, right? Yeah, perfect. <laughs> See if anybody believes that one.